Hello everybody, this is Charles Anderson, and I'm just a guy from Goodwill, Oklahoma, and I've got a great game idea. Uh, this is in my JMonkey Engine Java Basic series. This is part 10, Classes. Uh, now, I actually had posted another version, but I, I found some errors in it, so I'm reposting with the corrections. Uh, so, anyway, this is part 10 uh, in the series. It covers classes. Previously was packages. Uh, and, of course, inside of the package, there can be you know, uh, classes, interfaces, and enumerations. And uh, so we're going to start off with classes. This is the big thing uh, that Java, and as an or object-oriented program, uh, covers. It. Classes are the big thing for objects. So, all right, let's see here. Okay, classes in Java. Uh, the keyword class in Java refers to a data object. Uh, it can contain primitives, you know, val the the the... Uh, bottommost uh, chunk of information, uh, methods, and uh, other classes uh, within itself. And uh, its natural value is that of a reference type variable. Okay, so yeah, it when you're uh, talking about instancing a new class, well, you're uh, creating a, a new uh, reference type variable, and the address of where it's stored in the heap is, is uh, put up there. So keywords can help define the nature of the class being created. And a class is usable when it is completely nailed down and defined. So I'm going to show a, uh, right quick. Remember, hello world, yes. Well, this is the class. Uh, this is this is your, uh, the way that it works is, you know, there's one public class per file. And public just means, uh, this is one of the key words, is that this is one of those ones that we want to be able to reuse, OK? So here's our public class that's going to be in this package of beginner Java. Uh, so uh, inside of this class, we just have one method, and that's good old main. And this is where the program starts, and this is where the program ends. Main itself is is a keyworded method that says, "Hey, this is this is where this is started at." So yeah, this program is inside of a class. Oh, well, isn't that cool? Uh, so yeah, as far as object-oriented programming, this one file right here is is executable in and of itself. And uh, if I were to type in uh, some primitives and such here, then you know I could denote it public, private, and all that good stuff with keywords. And so all this stuff in here uh, has the public, private, and all that good stuff. I'll go into that uh, later in this presentation. But yeah, the program that we've been programming all along, it's inside of class. All right, so <coughs> back to the presentation and make it pretty. Okay, so yes. Now, um, yeah, class is usable when it is completely nailed down and defined. Uh, now, there is a way to nail a class up in the air, and <laughs> and uh, this has to do with late binding and, um, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, defining it at the time, but it still has to be nailed down and defined. It can it but uh at runtime and late binding that's that's when it gets nailed down, those type of classes. So I'll leave it at that. It's for a later thing. Alright, now classes and methods. Alright? Uh classes have methods inside them. And so <coughs> uh you can Let's leave it at that for there right now. All right. So um, primitives, methods, classes declared in a class exist until you know its its instance is disposed of, uh, you know, or the program exits. Uh, so uh, once once it exits, then whatever's declared in 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 uh, in this class, it's uh, disposed of at that time. So. Um, and the reason I, I say all of this here is because I'm, I'm taking into account the keyword static. Uh, so there we go. Uh, primitives, methods, and classes declared in a method exist until the current method exits. So uh, yeah, this has to do with uh, locals because method, uh, it, it just does something and then it exits because a method exists on the stack. This will exist on the heap and in static you know, when it's needed and then it's disposed of. And this is always on the stack. So uh, classes contain methods. Well, and, you know, other stuff too. 
you know, like other classes and primitives and, you know, stuff like that. But uh, this is the big distinction in uh, the domain or scope and, you know, how long the data lasts. Uh, otherwise, uh, they share a lot of the same keywords. All right, so up here on uh, these are the scope keywords, and let's let's pull up the uh, good old thing right here. So uh, yeah, you see public class, and uh, there would also be private, or protected, or none. You know, the, there would be no keyword. So I'll go ahead and jump into the stuff like that. Okay, so a public, uh, a class noted as public, and there's only one public class per file, per code file, and um, there is uh, do, 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 inside of this public class, uh, there's public and protected and private and, well, default stuff, variables and methods and, and uh, classes. But public is visible and usable anywhere, anytime. You know, you, you make your package, and once that, you know, you build it, boom, it's now usable. Okay? And, and visible, uh, as long as you do, like, your import statement or do the fully qualified name. Protected. Okay. Uh, visible and usable for classes that extend or implement, you know, this class. And this has to do with subclassing, and that'll be gone into more with inheritance. And private, it's only visible and usable for this class, you know. Uh, not even subclasses can have access to it It's if it's extended or implemented. So uh, this there's, there's still a way to get to it, but uh, usually we set methods for working with these values or, or you know, variables that are uh, noted with this. And then finally, good old default. It's a local variable, all right? It's not quite public. It's pretty close. But it's visible and usable only in this package, okay? So once the package is built, a local variable, you know, of the, the class type is, is not seen. So it's usable but only for uh, the current package. All right. Ah, code static stack and heap. I, I should have an appendix there out there uh, which went over that. Uh, this has to do with the Java memory model. Of course, code is is not really in the scope of this. So you know, uh, it the the entire package you know that you make, and it's got your public class in it or classes and 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 such not. Uh, it's put somewhere once, and that's usually the hard drive. Okay. And then when you specify uh, which uh, jar file you want to run, uh, you know, on the, the Java, uh, and then there's like dash jar and then the name of the Java file. But anyway, it's uh, put somewhere once, and that's on the hard drive. Then you tell it, okay, start running. And, okay, and it's going to look for that, uh, that one spot where it said main, and then it starts running from there, and then it, it starts parsing it. And it pulls up all the applicable classes and packages that it uses. It looks through the whole thing. And uh, for where, where it needs to pull in, it pulls it in. And that goes into the heap. But uh, the code, and of course, that's the current bytecode running on the CPU. This really doesn't have to do with classes. The stack, yes, this has to do with classes. Uh, methods, okay? So uh, any any uh, classes that are instance in a method uh, get put in the heap with a little uh, the reference value put into the stack you know where it's at on the heap so uh, last in first out frames uh, I, I I went over that in the appendix static okay this gets constructed first all right anything that's marked static gets put into static and for classes you know the data values like uh, you know x and y uh, for like a, a two-dimensional point, okay? If that's shared between all the classes and there only needs to be one, then boom, that gets put in static. And that's done before uh, the code runs, actually. <clears throat> and uh, this is meant for stuff that only needs one copy, okay? So if you have a class that's labeled static, guess what? There's only going to be one copy, and that gets put in the static. It's, it's still inside of the heap, but, you know, it's, it's uh, only one copy gets created. And uh, the heap, 
you know, that contains a stack, static, and, you know, the dynamic bits for garbage collection when done, you know, when you instance. And so, uh, there you go. It, it If it's not static, then it's just considered heap. Heap contains all of it, but heap is just, you know, the full total room that you've got. Alrighty. Uh, let's see. Seven types of class variables. Oh, yes. <coughs> uh, so, uh, there's still two official types of those four types of variables. Uh, this one has to do with extending in scope. So first, we have the class variable. Okay. Uh, this is a static variable or a method signature. Okay. Accessed by class name, you know, dot the variable. Uh, disposed when the program exits. So, uh... I'll go ahead and run through this and then come back to it. Okay, sounds good. I'll do that. Two, the instance variable. This is a non-static variable, okay? Uh, so the method signature, yeah, for methods, uh, it can be static or non-static, but its signature gets put in with the rest of the static stuff. So this is the static stuff here. And then this is the dynamic stuff here, so a non-static variable. Uh, <coughs> it's initialized with the keyword new, all right? Uh, it's accessed by, you know, your instance name and dot the variable uh, uh, disposed along with the instance class. So when the instance gets disposed of, bam, uh, everything else gets freed up. Array components. Yes, uh, this is listed because it's, you know, it's a reference type of primitive uh, used to work with an indexer array because an array is very much like a class except all it, it classes can have like different sized variables and uh, you know, uh, methods inside of it, but arrays can only have primitives inside of it, and it's all, or, well, an array can even contain a list of classes, but remember, classes are reference values, so it's still the same size. So, it's all the same size for each, you know, index that it's built for, and uh, it uses that indexer there, and it says, here's the first element at zero, then plus one, plus two, plus three, plus four, plus five, all that good stuff. So it's really of types one and two, you know, static or, you know, class variable uh, or, you know, instanced or what, what was it? What was that one other called? Instance variable. Oh, yeah. D der. <clears throat> so this is the honorable mention due to its nature. Yay. And next up, uh, method parameter. Uh, this is the variables declared in a method signature disposed when the method completes. And, uh, yeah, that'll, that'll be a quick, easy show. Constructor parameter. Yeah, I haven't covered constructors yet, but, uh, you know, because we're jumping into classes. But <coughs> it's a method, right? And it has the same name of the class. And what it does is it, it's meant for initializing uh, those initial values. And I'll go into that more in detail, you know, when I play with it. But uh, the variable declared in a method signature for constructing initializing a class instance. So disposed when the constructor method ex exits, because you know, it's uh, just like the uh, method parameter. It's disposed when the method completes. So these, these parameters, they kind of go into the stack. Uh, the exception parameter, all right. Uh, this is for uh, when we do error handling, and it's the variable containing the current exception for try catch error handling block disposed when method exits. So uh, like the bigger stack in general. Uh, the local variable. Uh, this is a variable that is declared. You know, it's a default. There's no um, public, private, or anything. But uh, these are these have to do with inside of a method. Uh, this must be initialized before it can be used. Mm -hmm. It's got to be nailed down. Uh, it is disposed of immediately upon exiting the current block. So uh, watch out for when uh, declaring initializing a local variable inside of a switch statement. Uh, big, big. Uh, be careful on there, because uh, you can declare a variable anytime in a method, and uh, if it's not set and you try to use it, eh, well, the compiler will help you out with that. <laughs> it could be skipped and lead to serious problems, so, yeah. All right, uh, finally, we got some more keywords just to throw up at you. Uh, throw up. Ha, ha, ha. We got uh, the keywords final, abstract, and extends. More in detail on class inheritance. Uh, the rough idea is the final keyword is, A, this class is what it is. You can't extend it. So that's, that's that. And for stuff inside of a class, uh, final, like for a primitive final, uh, it means I can only be set to once. All right? 
So once I'm set, boom. I have to be set before I can be used, but once I'm set, that's it. Uh, you can't change me. I'm a, I'm a true constant. All right, abstract, uh, that means I'm really not uh, usable. I'm nailed up into the air <laughs> for now. So, and extends, uh, this is for, you know, the extending, it, subclasses, making children, all that good stuff. Uh, so more in detail on class inheritance. The keyword, serializable and transient, uh, more on detail on serialization, or uh, sending data between programs. Yay. <laughs> uh, keyword implements, uh, that's more in detail on interfaces, and the keyword volatile, well, interfaces, uh, hey, suppose you want uh, a program to have a certain type of method in it, and you know what you want the method to do, and this class, you know, you want those methods to be in this class, and so the class can override it and uh, actually define what it's supposed, to, what that method is supposed to do for this type, kind of class. So, you know, that's like, yeah, I'll leave it at that. Go into detail on the interfaces and keyword volatile. More in detail on threads, and of course, there we are. All right. Uh, for those of you who are just needing the translation, uh, I'm using JMonkey Engine. I'm using Java. I'm Charles Anderson. I'm an indie game developer for Project Idiog. Email. I've got a Twitter. There you go. And now, for those of you who want to play around with this stuff, uh, let's start playing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That should be good. That should be good. Yes. Class variable. Okay. So static variable or method signature. So. Uh, let's go over to our little <laughs> hello world example, all right? And uh, yeah, so we've got this class beginner Java, all right? Here we have the method. And you know what? I am going to go ahead and let's see here. Static. And I'll go ahead and make it public, why not? It doesn't have to be, but you know, it's just good to get into the process of public and private. So public static, uh, do, 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 do. Uh, like my int, why not? All right, and now it's gonna tell me. Oh, right, uh, int. My int. There we go. All right. You'll notice that it, it's it's got this kind of like italics right here. Well, the italics means hey, uh, yeah, I'm I'm static. All right, and then we'll give something else to play with. Uh, like this method right here. Yeah. That's that's naturally uh, static. So, oh, uh, let's see. I was saying static, non-static. So public. Uh, let's see. This one does not need to be static. And it doesn't even need to return anything. Uh, print message. Oh, and you'll, I, I try to have, like, where my classes have a capital letter at the beginning. And, oh, right, since this is public, now that one also has a capital letter. Yeah, which is different from a local, which I try to keep as, like, a little first letter. Okay, private message, and, oh, let's just go string. My message. <laughs> oh, nope, that's not right. That, that, that's what I was wanting. Okay. And then we'll just do like a little. All right, and we'll just say my message. There we go. And and uh, don't have to worry about return. I'll I'll go more into return on methods. All right. So uh, now to use a static thing, a, a static method, <clears throat> I don't have to, well, let's give it another static. There we go. <clears throat> oh, what's this? Oh, uh, right. Uh, to, to, to. There we go. Print static message. <laughs> well, actually, it should be static print message, but print. It's good to have the verb. Uh, 
uh, thing in there. Uh, maybe maybe a better way of saying this would be print message static version. <laughs> There we go. And dirt, 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 that looks good. So we've got a static, uh, a static method signature. Okay, we've got a regular method signature, and we've got a static int. All right. And okay. So uh, from here, I can now say. Oh, you know what? I can I can just go on ahead and because this is static, I can just go my int. Now, notice I have not set this to anything. Okay. Um, what it is is when you declare something static, if you don't give it a value, it will do to zero. This is this is one of the things where I was like, huh? Why? Why did it work? Well, um, yeah. When you have this one, it'll default to zero as static. If it's static, it'll default to zero. If it's inside a method, yeah, you have to initialize it. And it can't be static inside of a, a method. So, yeah, go figure. All right, so when we print it out, yeah, zero. Uh, that's that's one of the parts where I was, like, flubbing up on earlier, and I was like, what is it? well, I clarified that for myself. And I can make it equal five. There we are. And when I play it, now it equals five. Okay. So... System, out, print line, my int, no problem. Uh, if I wanted to use the fully qualified name, it would be beginner, oh wait, java dot, uh -huh, dot my int. So that's its fully qualified name, just if you want to be clear about it. Of course, we don't need to because we're inside of that class, so that's just uh, automatically known. So, yeah, just to show you. Same thing. Okay. Um, do, 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 do. Okay. Now let's use this uh, print message static version. Uh, so uh, I'll go ahead and use the fully qualified name, although I can probably just go print message static <laughs> version. And uh, let's see. Let's go rock on. And there. And boom, there it is. And so there's a static version. And go ahead and pop in the fully qualified name just to oh, beginner Java dot beginner Java dot print message da da da. There we go. Same thing. And you'll notice that where it gets static, bam, it gives it that italic type stuff. All right, so. Right, I press play. Yeah, I press play. So I can get rid of that. Boop. And I can get rid of that. Okay. Okay, so there's a static. Now, what happens if I try to do print message? Well, it's going to mess up. But i got to show you why first. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> let's see. Uh, woo hoo. <laughs> Okay, now, all of a sudden it gives me the red squealy. Hey, non-static, it cannot be referenced from a static context because this is not static. This is actually part of the class, okay? It's got a signature in there, yeah. Uh, but it, the me you know, it is, this, this just can't be put in there, all right? So what I've got to do is I've got to instance the class to be able to use that method. So uh, let's create... Beginner Java. Uh, my <laughs> okay, no, no. Uh, my begin J. There we are. <laughs> okay, and uh, let's 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 make a new instance. Oh, right, and constructor. There we are. Now I can just say my begin j oh 
All right, and there we go. So now, woohoo! Yeah, because hey, this is this is not static, and to access something in you know, in a static context, you got to nail it down. And guess what? Here is where we nail it down. So this makes a, a new instance on the heap that can be referenced, and then we use that instance and print the message. Yay! So there we go. Uh, static versus non-static, and uh, private and protected. I'll go into in more detail on, uh, you know, uh, children, and because I'm in the same package with this, I can even like just get rid of these, and this this will only be show up for this, you know, for this current build. So that's default. There you go. Uh, this has to be public because it has to be visible from the package, no matter what. So, all right. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, I wonder how much. Number. Okay. So the instance variable. Well, that's a non-static variable. Okay. Uh, initialized with keyword new. Yeah. So access by instance name the variable. All right. So let's make a uh, non-static variable now. Do do do. And. Uh, Let's go like um, what? See, I did an integer. How about a character? Yeah. Uh, and I'll just leave it on default. Equals. Oh, the uh, Let's go dollar sign. I like dollar sign. Dollar sign is nice. Okay, and uh, now. Do is now I have to come down here below its declaration because here's the declaration, so I've got to go make sure to go below it. And I can say uh, my begin j dot and look there it is on the the thing, and this notates that it's default so. There we are, my character, and when we run, because if I did it without the begin, my begin J, yeah, that doesn't work, because that would be like trying to say uh, beginner Java dot my character, and you know my int is static, but not my my uh, my character, so it's it's going to say, uh, yeah, that non-static variable <laughs> cannot be referenced from static context. Sorry, so. Ma, begin, J. There's the instance. It's nailed down. We can use it. All right. So that that gives you gives you a little bit on on that. Uh, so uh, for static stuff or method signatures, you know, it's accessed by class name. You know, the, dot the variable. Right. Of course, you can't actually use a non-static method in a static context. But you know, that's that's just how that goes. Um, you can use it in a dynamic context. So instanced for that. Next up, array components. Yeah, yeah, good old array components and <laughs> honorable mention. Uh, let's make it static. Why not? Uh, static. Uh, all right. Um, need to declare it as an array there. Okay. Uh, new. Car. Uh, what? Give it five? Yeah. And... Is it, uh, yeah, I guess I need to have a section saying what it is. Mm. 
each was this yeah hmm was it brackets then yeah okay so I only know how to 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 split that um And that has to be on the constructor. Okay, yeah. This is where constructors come in really handy. Uh, I'll hit that up when I, I need to. But what we can do is we can come down here and we can say my car array uh, zero. <laughs> oh, I really hate this. Ugh. Let's go. And I need to make a tight loop for this. <laughs> One, two, three, four. That's the size of my array. And ha. O. D. <laughs> Oof. Yeah, and then I would go. This is why I, I, I really kind of, uh, I really kind of don't like arrays. But hey, they are very handy. It's just not really handy for doing an example easily. So for I int i equals zero. I is less than or equal to uh, my car array dot length uh, minus one, but I can always just say that. <laughs> oh, I so cheat. I plus plus. So yeah, and then. Uh, I could one line it. Uh, I'll just leave it up here. Uh, all right. Oh, well, heck, there it is, right there. I can set it to a car array. Okay, so, so, heck with that. We'll just system dot out dot print, and give it the car array. Yeah. That should work. Uh, oh, and you know what? Let's go print line. Let's see if that'll work. Yeah! <laughs> okay, that's cool. So they, they had that functionality in there. Yay! Alright, so yeah, it's, it's a pain to initialize a character array. Much easier to do it with a string. However, if we need to, we can do some different functionality there. All right, so yeah, character array. It it's, can be static. It can be dynamic. Uh, so there, that. <laughs> I will not do the... Well, I, you know what? I can do it like this. Boom. And the only difference is... is that now, this cannot be referred to from a static context. So what I've got to do is I've got to take this, right... And go bloop, bloop, bloop to show which instance to refer to. All right, and same thing. All right, because otherwise it would be you know that the fully qualified name would be you know <laughs> beginner Java beginner Java dot my car in a static context. So all right, there we go. And you know what? I'm betting on that. I'm hitting. While. So, array components, there we go, really types 1 and 2, honorable mention due to its nature. And now for the method parameter. Oh, this one's easy. Uh, I can just go like this. Whoop, whoop, no, not, not that, that. Here, ow. Yes, uh, you're such a nice art program. I like you. Okay, 
uh, here we are. This is this is a method parameter. There you are. So yeah, this right here is what it's talking about. Uh, inside these little parentheses, when we're handing off stuff, whatever it is, can be integers, you know, any of the uh, primitives or classes. When we're handing off from one to another, then a little uh, this parameter gets created on the stack. Okay, so uh, all these are heap, heap, well, heap, you know, the static section of the heap, uh, just heap, and, you know, static or heap, just whatever it's declared as. And then the method parameter, this goes to the stack, okay? And it's disposed when the method completes. Boom. Constructor parameter. All right. Uh, let's see. Should I keep going? Yeah, I'll go ahead and keep going. Just wrap it up. All in one thing. Okay, constructor parameter. All right. Variable declared in method signature for constructing an initialize in class instance. Disposed when the constructor method exits. So, I'm uh, going to pull up. Do, do, do. Okay, so we got this class beginner driver. All right. Now, what we can do is we can have a method that is actually very specifically for creating this. And it will have to be public if I'm going to use it outside. I'll, you know, and um, it's going to have the same name as the. There we are. And so if I if I call this constructor, this is the constructor for this class. And let's say, oh, this this my my car array right here. All right, remember all this stuff here. Well, what I can what I can do is I can say uh, yes, yes, I know, and because I don't actually have an instance. Now, the proper way to say it would be this, because this is not static. So, when you're creating a new instance of this class, because this is this is an instance data, uh, it works either way. But it's understood this, because this is the dynamic context. Yes, dynamic. So this is its <laughs> fully qualified name. A hey, this, which is understood to be you know, beginner Java, beginner Java dot this, da -da -da. so yeah. Uh, and then of course when I play, it's the same thing. Oh wait, I can delete this. Don't have to. It'll still run the same. Whoa! Did I mess up? I messed up. Dang it. Okay, I said this da 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 da, and. So that should have set that. Did I get my... Let's try it again. No? Wait, was there supposed to be some special character? Dang it! I'm gonna have to go and do some schooling for myself. Alright, so... Ah. Yeesh. Uh, constructors. Yeah, I'm gonna have to have constructors. Eesh. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to have constructors. Okay, it's like this, but not quite this. I I've messed up somewhere in my uh, learning, so I will have to school myself better and have that ready for the next lesson. All right, so constructor parameter. So any that are you know, declared in the method signature for the constructor initialize you know, for initializing the class instance. Disposed when the constructor method ex exits. So uh, and then finally the exception parameter, this is for the error catching. And because uh, catching exceptions is a method uh, that that you start up when you say your try. But it's outside of the scope of your program. It's actually inside the scope of the Java runtime environment. So uh, your kind of exiting out of your program a little bit-ish, but it's only to catch 
these errors and try to handle them uh, before it the Java runtime environment says, all right, that's it. And of course, these are disposed when that method exits. All right, finally, the local variables. This variable that is declared as default, in other words, you, for, you didn't put public, private, or uh, uh, static. Uh, it's a local variable. Local variable on the class scope is you know good for the current package. Uh, the local variable for a method scope is good for the scope of that method, that block of code that's running. So it's disposed of immediately upon exiting the current block of code. And yeah, watch out for... And of course, we've been using these all along. So boom, there you go. Uh, that's This is the scope. All the others we just... I'm showing you in their new scopes. And this is, by default, inside of that good old static thing. All right. So that concludes this talk. And I will be... I will be totally getting my uh, initializer, my uh, constructor, <laughs> typed up correctly next time. So, y'all have a good one, and uh, do, 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 do. I learn as I teach, and there we go. All right, so I've been using JMonkey Engine. I'm using Java. Uh, my name is Charles Anderson, indie game developer, and my project's Idiog. I've got an email, I've got a Twitter, and I may replace this one if 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 I but I'll I'll just be going into it more on like classes plus one to get my constructor correct. Okay, y'all have a good one.